Hello everyone and welcome back to Cobian History. Today we are gonna have a look at another medieval profession, a dangerous one this time. The lime burner is someone who produces quicklime by burning calcium rich minerals such as limestone, chalk and marble. Even seashells or coral could be used to create it. Quicklime can then also be used to produce slacked lime by adding water to it. And between these different forms, lime has a lot of useful properties, which caused lime to be utilized in a variety of different processes, such as leather tanning, dyeing, soap making, agriculture in the form of fertilizer, in construction in the form of mortar or concrete and so on. Lime is easily made by heating limestone, and this was already known by the earliest civilizations. People who lived in the area where Jordan is now, around 7500 BC, made plaster from a mixture of lime and crushed limestone to cover the walls and floors of their homes. Ancient Egyptians used lime to tan their skins, lime colors were used in Greek frescoes and could have possibly been a component of Greek fire. The Chinese used lime mortar in the construction of the Great Wall. In Rome, in addition to using lime in construction as well, Roman women used unslacked lime to give their hair a light red hue. In medieval Europe, agricultural use of lime only became widely possible when coal mining became cheaper in the late 13th century. Lime was also widely used throughout Europe in the form of plaster and paint, and it served as a principal building material in construction. Uses include lime mortar, lime plaster, lime render, lime ash floors, whitewashing and so on. So now it's time to talk about the process of creating lime from limestone. The limestone was usually crushed by hand into lumps of around 2 to 6 centimeters in size. If it was crushed too finely, it couldn't be used as the fire needs gaps between the chunks to be able to breathe. Lime burners used kilns to produce lime. Lime kilns can be split into two categories. Flare kilns and draw kilns. In a flare kiln, a bottom layer of coal was put in, and on top of that, the kiln was filled with chalk. They let the fire burn for days, which transformed the chalk into lime, and then the kiln was fully emptied. In a draw kiln, however, the kiln was filled with alternating dome shaped layers of chalk or limestone and wood or coal. It was then lit from the bottom and spread upwards through the layers. As it burned, lime was collected through a grated hole at the bottom, known as the draw hole. As it burned further, layers of stone and fuel could be added on top of it to keep the kiln going continuously. The earliest lime kilns that we know of seem to differ little from those used in small-scale production up until the early 1900s. Lime kilns are often found in small ports, as it was mainly transported by water due to the issues with land transport before the industrial era. The kilns were limited in size, because if the diameter was too wide, the pile was likely to collapse in on itself as it burns, extinguishing the fire. So the common kiln was usually able to make between 25 to 30 tons of lime in a batch, which took about a week to produce. That week can be split into different parts. The first day was to load the kiln. Then they had three days where it burned, two days to cool, and then the final day to unload. The degree of burning was controlled by trial and error from batch to batch, by varying the amount of fuel that was used. Because there could be a large difference in temperature between the center of the fire and the material closer to the walls of the kiln, the lime that was produced wasn't all of the same quality. The best quicklime is produced at a temperature of about 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius. If the temperature got too high, unreactive dead burnt lime was created, and where the temperature wasn't high enough, the limestone remained unburnt. 
Lime production was also sometimes carried out on an industrial scale. It was common for a complex to have seven kilns, one for every day it took to produce lime. That way, loading and unloading gangs could work the seven kilns in rotation throughout the week. Moving from kiln to kiln, as every day one needed to be loaded and another needed to be unloaded. Once the quicklime was produced, they could then turn it into slack lime by adding water. Dry slacking is when quicklime is slacked with just enough water to hydrate it, but not too much so it remains in a powder form. In wet slacking, an excess of water is added to hydrate the quicklime and it forms a sort of lime putty. Due to lime's adhesive properties, slacked lime can then be made into plaster, stucco, mortar and concrete, usually by mixing it with sand, mud and or dung. It could also be used to whitewash buildings, as well as to make parchment, and it could even be used to create soap by mixing it with olive oil and ashes. An example of the chemical reactions that make lime so useful is when slacked lime or calcium hydroxide is mixed into a thick slurry with sand and water to form mortar. After the mortar has been used to lay the masonry, the slacked lime inside the mortar slowly begins to react with the carbon dioxide to form calcium carbonate, also known as limestone. So this shows the cycle of limestone, where you can take limestone in the form of rocks, heat it and add water to make it more malleable, then use it wherever you want it to be used and it will turn back into rock once you're finished. At the beginning I mentioned that the profession of lime burning is a dangerous one and now we will look into why that is. Quick lime reacts violently with water, so it spits, sputters and steams and can even explode as it undergoes the chemical transformation into slacked lime. It causes severe irritation when placed in contact with moist skin or in the eyes. If inhaled it may cause coughing, sneezing, labored breathing, it can cause external burns and if you inhale it also internal burns, abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting. Although quicklime is not considered to be a fire hazard, when it reacts to water it can release enough heat to ignite combustible materials. The chemical reaction that happens inside the lime kiln can be dangerous as well. It can produce clouds of carbon monoxide, which can paralyze or suffocate you if you stay in it too long. These reactions can be so dangerous that they have even been weaponized in the past. In 80 BC, the Roman general Sertorius created choking clouds from lime powder to defeat the Sharakatani of Hispania, who had taken refuge in caves. Thanks for watching this video about the lime burners. I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, you can leave a like or let me know your thoughts in the comments below. On screen now, you can also find a link to my Medieval Professions playlist where you'll find more videos like this one. Or if you're interested in history as a whole, you can subscribe to my channel as well.